Hi guys, I am recording this video because I really want to talk more about your extended bibliography. Um, talking about your paper, um, it is a case study paper. The point of a case study is to take a look at a narrow uh, group of people or a narrow um, focus, really kind of hone in on what's going on with that narrowed focus, whatever it is that you're looking at, and then make claims about all of it. You know, if the, for example, if the narrow focus represents something br bigger, broader, you're just looking at one slice of the pie um, and assuming that all slices of the pie are going to kind of be equal so you can really kind of look and dig into um, the specifics of one aspect more so than having to look at multiple different cases in a more surface level kind of way. This allows you to go in more depth with the things that you're analyzing and that's something that you're going to come across a lot in psychology and sociology and APA stands for American Psychological Association so that's why it is the um, the the formatting style that and the writing style that is um, used in the social sciences and in psychology and things like that. Okay, um, so your APA case study paper is a case study of social media. That means that the slice of pie you're looking at has to be one narrow aspect of social media. And what you see on the screen here is the social media case study paper assignment sheet. I've linked you to this in the FYI section for this week, so you can go in and really look at it and make sure that you fully understand what it is that you need to be researching and preparing for. I'm just gonna talk about it in general. Um, but what I mean by picking a narrow focus and doing a case study on social media means picking one aspect of social media or one person on social media or one Facebook page or one Twitter feed, um, one business, maybe even an event or a hashtag um, or some kind of function of social media, like a meme um, and one meme in particular, um, a face, the fact that, you know, there's character counts or Facebook live streams or YouTube live or whatever. Um, what you're going to do is you're just going to pick one thing you're going to analyze it. And that's in, and this is going to give you um, an extremely in-depth analysis of the facets of just that one thing so that we can make generalizations about social media. Um, I'm really interested in this idea because I am on social media and I'm on social media a lot, probably more than I should be. And I've been very fascinated with the way that social media affects myself and the people around me. And so I'm very interested in hearing my students take on social media and whether it's positive or negative or whatever. Um, so you will use social media as your primary source in this paper. That means it's what you're analyzing. In the same sense that your movie or your TV show from our last paper was your primary source, right? So the thing that you are digging into and looking at and analyzing, that's our social media. With that being said, for this paper, anything on social media is a primary source. It's one primary source. So if you're looking at um, a Twitter feed or if you're looking at a Facebook page or at someone's Instagram or something like that and they post a comment and then below their comment there are 3,000 replies or additional comments, each one of those individually counts as one primary source. So if you have a comment with 3,000 replies, then right there you have 3,001 primary sources. So finding primary sources on social media is way easier than you would think. Um, because it's it, you're looking, if you're on social media, you're looking at primary source social media all the time. Um, so some examples of the types of case studies that you can pick 
are people, friends, celebrities, politicians. Um, if I were to do this project, I would probably pick my best friend to analyze on social media because I think that she is so interesting. Um, you could pick a business like Wendy's, you know, they've gotten a lot of, I guess, hype or whatever from, um, roasting, their customers or other people on social media. It's very interesting. Um, an event, Hurricane Katrina is an example that I can think of, but, um, you know, events can be something devastating that's happened to a nation. Um, I'm thinking, you know, about all of the posts that I've been seeing lately about, um, the mosque shootings in New Zealand. Um, and, or it could be, you know, an event that's something positive, like, um, a f I don't know, a run or some kind of marathon um, that's goal is to get money for or sponsor some kind of project like a cure for cancer or something like that. Um, you can look at a hashtag. I'm just kind of looking down in my comments here. Um, you can look at a specific hashtag. Like I did have somebody um, one semester look at hashtag browse on fleek. Um, and that was interesting. Um, you can look at memes and you, you know, you would just want to look at one meme in particular and all of the different offshoots of it. So for example, um, if there were student memes that you thought were great or Kermit the Frog meme or Grumpy Cat or something like that. Um, and then you can also look at, you know, the functions of social media, like the share function or the messaging function, private, like direct messaging or private messaging or whatever. Um, the fact that we can like each other's posts without actually having to comment on them um, or favorite or heart them on Instagram, whatever that means. Um, so there are so many different things that you can look at, but you need to pick something narrow, um, but not too narrow. So um, if I look at memes, for example, too narrow would be just one meme, like one image on your page. Too broad would be all of the memes, but right there in the middle, um, one theme meme, um, those, that's kind of the, the goal there that you would want to be looking at. Um, and if you have questions, of course, please email me. Um, so that's the concept of a case study. And there are a lot of questions here that we'll talk about. This is again, the, the major paper assignment sheet. Um, but overall, your goal is to analyze this some narrow specific thing about social media in order to make an argument about social media. So the paper is you making an argument about social media by looking at something specific. Um, you could make an argument about social media by looking at, uh, you know, how many character counts you get for writing a, a tweet or the fact that you can share an image. Um, you could, you know, look at all sorts of things all in one paper. You could do it all, but that's not the goal of this paper. The goal of this paper is to make whatever your argument is by just looking at one specific thing. So instead of just targeting that surface level, um, shallow argument, you get, it, even though it's narrow, it's ver a very in-depth argument. Um, I don't need to really talk too much more about your goal here, except to say that you only get, uh, well, not you only get one topic, obviously you only get one topic, but my students for this project in each class, so you don't have to compete against other classes, but for your class, you only one topic can be written about per class. So what that means is nobody can have the same topics. Okay, so what do you actually have to do for the first part of this project? So here's the rubric. Um, you are writing an extended bibliography. Now an extended bibliography is not the same as your annotated bibliography. It's different and challenging in some ways, but it's the same and easy in other ways. So the difference is that while you still have to type up a list of the sources that you could consider using in your paper, 
you don't have to write annotations for them. So you don't have to have paragraphs below each citation explaining and summarizing the main idea and talking about how you're going to use it. All you have to do is write me a list of your references that you have found so far. So the, that's the easy thing is you don't have to actually write any paragraphs for this. The hard thing is that I'm asking for 30 sources. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as we go along. But just remember that example of 3001 primary sources. So I think that that maybe will make you feel a little better. Okay, so your extended bibliography is 100 points. Um, prompt and instructions, create an APA formatted extended bibliography. Annotations are not required. APA format refers not only to how you set up that page, but also how you cite each one of your sources. If we look down at the rubric, 80% of this project, this extended bibliography, is that your citations or your references are in APA format. So if you give me a list of references and all 30 of them are in MLA format, you will get maximum 20 points out of 100 on this assignment because they all have to be in APA format. Um, that's, the, that's my goal for this is to help you do research, but also to really get you extremely familiar with APA format because you're probably not getting it from too many other sources. Okay, um, create an APA formatted extended bibliography including at least 20 primary sources of social media posts that relate to the event, topic, or social media element. Okay, so remember you have to pick one topic. Um, to help you the most, you want to find social media posts that vary in content. So if you found 20 social media posts that said the exact same thing, that could be good to truly reinforce that people are feeling a certain way, um, but it's really not going to help you um, invent lots and lots of topics to write about because you really only have some 20 people saying the exact same thing. So you want to get a varied amount of responses to whatever your topic is. Or, you know, if you have a bunch of memes, then your primary sources can be the memes themselves, but also, you know, comments about the memes. What are people saying? What are they posting about? You know, are they sharing it? Are they resharing? Are they sharing it with a, com a new comment? Uh, so consider the goals of the research paper when finding primary sources for your extended bibliography. I would like you to include at least three different types of social media. Um, and social media covers a lot of different definitions. So personal blogs are social media. You want to think of social media as like unedited content that anyone can post instantly to the internet. Facebook. Nobody's editing your Facebook page. Um, there might be Facebook pages that are edited, but you can go to Facebook, post whatever you want, call it a day. Everybody or just your friends or whoever you have, whatever you have your settings set as, can see that. Um, personal blogs are much the same way. You can start a personal blog right now and anyone can see or whoever you want to see, they can view your, your posts. So personal blogs count as social media because then also people can engage with you through comments. Media sharing sites like YouTube, personal networks, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. Even business networks, um, things like LinkedIn, that counts as social media. Social publishing, online review sites. So think about like IMDB, that's a social thing. It's edited by the public. Um, there are comments that you can add, you can rank and review your things on your own. Um, bookmarking sites, and I think about, like Goodreads, um, discussion forums like Reddit. Reddit is wonderful. Um, E-commerce. I don't know what that means. You can you can Google that. Um, but there's lots of social media. So think about it. it. Has to be something that you can just post to. Um, you sign up for an account. You make your comment. You move on. There are times though when primary sources like social media, in this case, your social media, and your secondary sources overlap or are found in the same space. So for example, if you've ever read an article that's published by some kind of online magazine, but then you have the ability to type up a comment below that article and just post it, 
that comment is social media, but the article itself is not. It can be very, very tricky. Um, so note, articles published online are not considered social media, but these could be secondary sources, like BuzzFeed, New York Times, those are examples of articles. Um, and that's probably because they are going to have an editor who's at least doing a quick read before they publish the content. Okay, so in addition to your 20 social media sources, you should provide a bibliographic entry, so a citation or a reference for five secondary credible sources about the event. So this is really that like those articles that you find online. Articles, newspapers, magazines, um, anything that comes from the internet, that stuff all counts as five credible sources. Then I also want you to have five scholarly articles on your topic of social media's influences, just kind of in general. So here's what I run into every single time I do this project, even though I say this. Um, and so maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm not saying it right. Um, if you're picking a topic that is very, very recent, and you go to ProQuest looking for a scholarly article or wherever you find your scholarly articles, and you type in that event, you're not going to find a scholarly article on your topic. And the reason for that is because it takes years sometimes to get scholarship published because you have to do research and you have to think about it and you have to get it peer reviewed and then you have to get somebody to accept it and then they have to edit it and then they have to edit it again and then you have to edit it. And so it's a big, big, big process. If something, if your topic just happened, or even happened within the past two years, you might not be able to find a scholarly article. You certainly could find a credible article, but maybe not a scholarly article on your topic. So if that happens to you, then just go with general articles about social media because they're out there and they can be extremely helpful for you. Um, just find articles where people are making arguments about social media. It can be completely unrelated to your topic and that is perfectly fine. Um, you don't have to annotate these sources, but your extended bibliography is 30. It's a list of those 30 sources in APA format. Here's an example of a primary source. So this is a tweet that was published back in 2011 on Twitter by someone named Jay Goldman. His Twitter handle is at Goldman44, and he wrote POTUS to address the nation tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's his comment to Twitter. Um, that's a primary source. You could analyze the language, the timing, what he's talking about, his vagueness, um, the fact that he only has a certain number of characters, the fact that it's been retweeted 149 times or has 38 likes, um, you know, just all of the things about this you could analyze. This is a primary source. Um, the reason that Jay Goldman posted this is because this happened right around um, when Bin Laden um, was killed. I think that's correct. <laughs> okay, so your secondary source then on this topic would be maybe like a news article from CNN about how Bin Laden news spread on Twitter and it talking about, you know, some of the misinformation that was spread because of how quickly information can go from person to person. Um, this would be a secondary source though, because again, CNN is going to have editors and they're going to have people who um, read through this content. You cannot just any old person cannot just go to CNN.com and publish an article. So it is not social media. So this is a good secondary source. Now this isn't a scholarly article. It counts as just a credible secondary source. Okay, um, so that covers everything. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Um, you can either let me know through this week's activity, or you can send me an email right now and ask me questions. I am absolutely 100% open to all of the questions that you have because I fully understand that this project takes a couple minutes to wrap your head around. So please ask me questions if you have them. All right, guys, have a great week.